Welcome to our lecture online. Determining whether or not a sequence diverges or converges has a lot in common with determining the limit of certain algebraic expressions. What we have to look for specifically is the powers of the ends that we use inside the formula. So here we have a sequence expressed as a formula a sub n equals n squared divided by n squared plus 1. So when we look at the powers of n in the numerator and the power of n in the denominator, if they're equal to one another, then the sequence will converge. And so here we have some examples of how to figure that out. Now there's two ways of finding that limit. What will the final value, the infinite value be in the sequence? Well, that will depend upon the powers of n, and in this case, if the powers are equal to one another, then typically we look at the coefficients in front of those n terms to determine what the final value of that sequence will be, or the infinite value of that sequence. One way also we can look at it is simply write out the sequential terms in the sequence and see where the number seems to be going to. So let's try that first. So in this case, we can say that this is equal to the sequence. Well, when n is equal to 1, we have 1 divided by 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. When n is equal to 2, we have 4 divided by 4 plus 1, which is 5, or 4 fifths. When n is equal to 3, we have 9 tenths. When n is equal to 4, we have 16 seventeenths. When n is equal to 5, we have 25 over 26. So you can see that as the numbers increase, or as, as we go further down the sequence, the number seems to be converging to 1. So my guess would be at this point that the sequence eventually converges to the number 1. Another way to determine that is to look at the coefficients. Here we have 1, there we have 1, and so the limit will be equal to the ratio of these two coefficients of the terms where we have the highest power of n. So in this case, simply looking at that, the final number is going to be 1 over 1, which is 1, which means that our assumption here, by the way the trend was going, does indeed match the value that we get when we look at the coefficients of the highest power n terms. Now looking at the second sequence, notice we have the square root of n divided by 4 to the n power. Again, since the exponents of the n's are the same, this is n to the 1 and n to the 1, and then basically since we take the square root of the numerator and the denominator, the exponents are essentially 1 half. Since they're equal to each other, we know again that they will converge. To get a feel of what that may be, we can throw in some numbers. So this is equal to, when n is equal to 1, we have the square root of 2 divided by, well that would be 5, so it would be the square root of 2 divided by 5. The next term would be when n is 2, that would be 3 divided by 9, so that would be the square root of 3 divided by 9. The next term would be when n is 3, that would be 4 over 13, so the square root of 4 over 13. And the next one would be when n is 5, that would be 6 over, that would be 21, the square root of 6 over 21. And you can see that you don't readily see where this is converging to. However, a better way to do that might be to simply look at the coefficients. Since the exponents are the same, we know that the sequence will converge. So at this point, we're still not sure, but we know that the sequence will converge to the ratio of the coefficients. So we know that it will be the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 4, which is equal to 1 over 2. So we know the sequence will converge to 1 half, even though it wasn't readily apparent by using these numbers right here. So sometimes we just simply jump right to the technique that we need to use to find the convergent number. On the next one, that's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to depend upon the ratio of the coefficients in front of n because we're taking the natural log of n and the natural log of 2n. But to get a feel of what those values may be, we may say, okay, let's calculate some ratios here. We're going to take when n is equal to 1, when n is equal to 1, we take the natural log of 1 divided by the natural log of 2, which is going to be equal to, and of course in that case, I believe the natural log of 1 is 0. So that will be 0 over something, which is equal to 0. 
If we now take another number, so we go down the sequence a little bit, let's try n is equal to 10. So we take the natural log of 10 divided by the natural log of 20. So 10, take the natural log, divided by 20, take the natural log, and that gives us 0 0.768. If we now take bigger numbers, let's say n is equal to 1,000, then we take the natural log of 1,000 divided by the natural log of 2,000. And let's see what that is equal to. 1,000, the natural log, divided by 2,000, the natural log equals, and now we get 0 0.909. Now, suspiciously, this seems to be going towards the number 1. So what I'm going to do next is use a very big number. How about n equals 10 to the 9th? So then we get the natural log of 10 to the 9th divided by the natural log of 2 times 10 to the 9th. And let's see what that is equal to. So 1e to the 9th, take the natural log, divided by 2e to the 9th, take the natural log, equals. And now we get the number 0.967. And you can see that as the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger, that ratio appeared to be going to the number one. So I would say that in the end, one will be what this ratio converges to. And finally, again, we have an example here that is a little bit more like the norm. Here we have n to the second power, n to the first power, and n to the second power. We ignore everything else. We ignore the two times and we ignore the number two. We simply look at the portions of the numerator and the denominator where n is raised to the highest power. Since this power and this power is equal to one another, we can say that the sequence will converge as well. And it will converge to the number that is equal to the ratio of the coefficients of the n of the terms that have n to the highest power. In other words, we know that the ratio of conversions is going to be 4 to 1, which is equal to 4. 4 will be the number this sequence converges to. Again, we can figure that out by saying that this is equal to, and we're plugging some numbers for n. If n is equal to 1, then we have 4 plus 2 is 6 divided by, that would be 2 plus 1 is 3, that would be 6 divided by 3, which is 2. The next one, if n is equal to 2, well, that would be 4 times 4 is 16. That would be 18 divided by, that would be 4 plus 4, which is 8. And you can see that this number would be something slightly bigger than 2. And if we make a number which is equal to 10, that would be 100. That's 402. That would be 402 divided by, that would be 100 plus 20, that would be 120. And if we take a number equal to 100, that would be 10,000, that would be 40,002, 40,002 divided by 10,000 plus 200, that would be 10,200. And you can see that as the numbers get bigger and bigger for n, that the ratio essentially is going to come to 4 over 1. So you can see that our initial assessment of that limit by taking the coefficients of the terms that have the highest power of n, we can see that if we take larger and larger numbers in the sequence, it does appear to be converging to that number 4. And that's how you find, first of all, that the sequences will converge by looking at the highest power of n, and then you can typically find it by taking the ratios of the coefficients or, in the case of this, you simply have to work it out with larger and larger numbers to find that final value of that sequence as it converges. And that's how it's done.